हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज जॉय डेस्ट एंड आई एम फ्रॉम आई आई टी मद्रास करेंटली आई एम डूइंग एरोस्पेस इंजीनियरिंग ऑल दो माई एक्सपर्टिस इंक्लूड सम ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग एंड सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट ब्लॉक चेन दिस सो यू कैन रिव्यू अबाउट मी ऑन दिस वेबसाइट यू कैन डायरेक्टली गो टू रिजीमे एंड चेक वाट आई हैव डन एंड ऑल सो यू विल बी लाइक लर्निंग ग्राफ क्यू एल व्यू जेस एंड दिस Asura also, so you can not only learn those things, but also see them working in a real life scenario. So I'll be sharing you a form through which you can submit your GitHub IDs, and I'll be sharing you my repository such that you can directly get into into my repository and work on my project. So as I have expected, like every one of you know a little bit of coding. Not necessary. You should know. Entire like complex like architectures and all those things. As you know, Node.js uh, it's a uh, program uh, created on top of JavaScript. So JavaScript is like it's it's very it's similar language to that Python through which you can do uh, like client side scripting and all those things. It's a very flexible languages. That was this was like this is a uh, library or. Now, using GraphQL, you can create an API server very easily, and not not just simple API server. You can easily create a graphical a database service for your app. So let's just jump into coding, and I'll explain you. I guess this this is the keyword I have used, but still it didn't work. So let let us change the keyword and try this. Express it just. Let us not cede into that. Express it just. English. English two. We'll go back there. Uh, we'll input the new one. Open. And desktop. And publish this. So the next step is uh, we'll be using Azure for booting up our GraphQL server. So Azure is also a middleware, so can directly boot up a GraphQL server for you. So how to boot up a GraphQL server in Azure? It's very simple. You just go to, for example, uh, there are other ways around. I will tell you later on other ways around how to boot up. But in thirty seconds, you can boot up. You just go there. Uh, you can use Docker. You can use Kubernetes for booting up Azure server. But for right now, for simple task itself, we can directly deploy it into Heroku. Azure. on the united states you have to select the region where you have, you want to host that server and deploy there so i'll explain you how the azure server works properly so if you consider this is your database for azure server we use postgres azure is nothing it's a uh, pre-made server of graphql so so If we, if we, we can use Postgres or Mongo, anything, whatever we want. So in our case, we'll use Mongo. So setting up Postgres and Mongo is later on. We can understand. We can get it later on. I'll explain you how to set up these things. But right now, with one click, what happens? It automatically creates a Mongo DB server. Uh, if you see here, this is the GraphQL uh, server. And this is uh, the Postgres MongoDB, or anything it can be. You just have to connect any kind of database, and this might be a middle layer, or you can directly have a server somewhere there, and uh, your phone should connect to the GraphQL server. You can do either this or that way. Uh, I generally prefer doing this way because anyway you don't have to. Uh, it's very. I mean, you can do this way also, but I feel this way is the safer because in between there is one more authentication layer. So I prefer doing those things. So this is how the architecture works. Uh, we'll do it now. Try it out in thirty seconds. Click on those link. 
it will take you to this and deploy to Heroku. Okay, this is the URL of the, your server. Right now, go to this link and you will understand what is going on there. Mm, you have already known like in uh, SQL and in Postgres or in any other relation databases, you can create tables and all. So creating table in this, uh, this thing is like really easy. You just have to go there and create a table like user. You can ID or you can directly create frequently used columns. Just create an other, uh, like for me it's user. Create your own table by giving it a user, your name, anything. For me it's joy, so I'll give joy. Joy. And for example, I'll, I'll insert frequently used columns. So when you create a call, uh, table and all, you, you need a column name as ID. So like frequently used column as ID. And you can create a name. Which can be text and you can create a name email which can be text and you can create password which can be text and uh, also you can use other frequently used column like created add updated add and your table will be created so I suggest go to the link I have provided in the WhatsApp chat itself. Go there uh, and create your own table named as user your name. That's it. So once you have created that, uh, once you have created that, you can directly, I'll explain you what we can do in these things. Uh, these are the playground where you can directly write your queries without doing any kind of um, without any problem like you can directly create your own queries very easily so So, uh, uh, so after creating that, let me see how many of you have created. Okay. So no one is. Well, okay, you have created. Then I have created. Cool. So Tanmay has created, and uh, I guess one or one or two more will be creating that table. So after, okay, done. So Tanmay has created, and uh, I have created. So now for the sample data, we can insert very easily. Uh, Tanmay, and email ID, Tanmay, at gmail, gmail dot com, and the password we can write Tanmay, and create sample data. One more we can create. So this is what we can create. So the other way are like mix create by making a query. There are like three types of things you can do in this GraphQL server. You can do a query. You can get an aggregate. In a sense, you can put some condition. So this this is all you can do using carry there is mutation using mutation you can update it you can insert data these two things you can do also you can delete it so if you go there now we just just now we have inserted data right you can create a query email name password okay so if you read query will get you all the data uh, mutation Add. Insert user joy password name email so and affected rows 
password in the sense and one more will be paid and that is So as you can see, it has automatically generated your own queries very easily. I mean, you don't didn't have to write any code or any uh, statement for that. You just have to click and you just have to uh, click on those things and it automatically generated a query for you. So this is the query for inserting data in your table. See, as you can see, it affected one row. I mean, when you uh, when you queried up this, it has inserted one row into your table so if you go there in data and user join you see you will find this thing rakesh rakesh spectral rakesh okay so i guess tanmay is falling i don't know where are the other people how many uh samarpan is also following so have you created your own table Tanmay have created the, his own table. Uh, Samarpan, uh, I have not seen your table. Uh, maybe you have created in your own Asura uh, server, I guess. Yeah. You can use this server itself, which I, which I have pasted it in the WhatsApp group. If you want your server, it's okay, chill leave. Okay, so this is how you create a query. So, you, as you can see, it's very easy to create a query and Okay, fine. So everyone is like following. Uh, cool. So Tanmay is using my server. Chill only. You can use uh, my server. And uh, yeah, so writing query is very simple in this thing. And uh, how to use this is very si simple. You see this now. Now I'll uh, open a site. Postman. There is an app for Postman also, but uh, you can use Postman site also. Postman.com. So using Postman, you can uh, query a website very easily. I mean, you can hit a website. You can do uh, you can do post request. You can do get request and all. You can just directly test it out. So. So just go to this website, Postman, and go to the dashboard. If you don't have an account, just directly uh, you can sign in with Google itself. And view collection reports. So it will take you to my workspace. You can go there and create an API. Okay, no, you don't have to create API. You have to collection three. API to expose map service is true. I use this thing Postman app. It's very easy to use Postman. You can use Postman Chrome app itself. Postman Chrome extension. Even if you don't use Postman, it's still only we can directly use our fetch or any similar things. But if you use Postman, you don't have to write anything and directly generate those code for yourself. So if you have some kind of Postman Chrome, you can install it or you can directly download this Postman app. It's a very famous app. You can directly download and use it for your development purpose. Now, if you see, uh, this query and all you can use it very easily. So for example Copy this URL okay. So And new 
rotation body so like this and uh, it shows application JSON cool we test it out get request won't work hold the post JSON file okay fine this is not working application content type JSON So I'll explain what is going on here. Of course, let me test it out. This is a JSON request. Generally, it, it should be done like that way. Copy as curl, import, paste for text, import body. Okay. okay so thing is we have to give them a beautify doesn't works so we have to use such similar kind of things Let me check. Let me check other settings. Yeah. So the error which is coming because of this thing is like uh, here it requires a JSON file but this this thing is like it's not validating whether it's a JSON file or not I don't know why uh, I have not used Postman I just directly use uh, query uh, like fetch for getting data easily but this issue shouldn't come actually wait let me test it out Fail reading safety affected tools. Ah, oh, okay. So thing is here the issues is like you have to remove those n and, and means new line. But uh, when we imported it here, this n came by the by automatic itself. If you go there, if you remove all those ends. I get it's uh, okay. It didn't work. There is one more, and I guess uh, password rakesh. Oh, this is one more issue. So if you are using uh, double quotes, you have to use single quote inside the string. Go there. Search. Okay, it also didn't work again. One more issue. Set my mutation. Okay. Error is not a valid GraphQL query. New 
mutation mutation should work ideally okay so uh thing was like i have used this thing but uh i generally don't don't use this postman so i have no idea why these issues are coming but it's very easy to in the production itself because we'll be importing a client library library in the sense a client uh uh client Mm, we will be importing a client uh, npm library using which uh, we can directly query from there itself i don't know why this issue then some string issues are there the import was wrong i guess let me check once again okay chill we'll directly use it in the fetch itself we'll write the code for this and use it instead of importing the code it from from here itself we'll directly import it uh, i'll directly write a code for that and right now i'll explain you about this uh, package what all things are there inside this when you uh, when you generate this it automatically creates for you uh, four or five folders there if you see there are four folders first one is bin and every code is run the first thing it runs is www so this is uh, this is the first starting part of a starting part of a pack uh, of, of an app second part is uh, public it's here all the images and uh, javascript files which are state statics i mean all those things which you in html things when whichever things you import it i mean include in your uh, create a link right so that that things and all you put it in this public and then you have roots inside roots you write all the back end codes so this is in text here you can see all those back end codes are written in this thing so if you go and check all those things will have those code inside this you can write your logic inside this any logic you can put and then you can render depending upon your logic so this is what it it's there so right now uh so we'll be using fetch library one more library which is used uh fetch no fetch Uh, it's an npm library through which you can request a server and get data so whenever you need data you have to request a server right whether you have to do either you have to do a post request or get request but you have to request a server for that purpose we use uh, not fetch node fetch library so in order to get that library we have to run in a terminal npm so terminal in the sense uh, in the okay you can use graphql option on postman acha okay i have never seen i think is i have not used postman i have directly imported i have directly used okay very very well Oh, okay, fine. So directly imported into GraphQL. Now, if you go and click on code, you will get the code for JavaScript fetch. Fetch itself. Remove all those things. Yeah. So. thanks for letting me know that we have a graphql options on postman itself so whenever you create a query uh, it's very simple to create a query itself you can just click and uh, get those queries automatically built up 
and uh, you just have to copy it and paste it there itself um, okay all those things uh, you have to copy and paste it here itself and go there i mean we can write an entire code but so we can write an entire similar code which was i was i was thinking of doing but anyway like instead of writing code entirely we can directly generate the code for it will automatically generate the code for us we can directly go there and inside views if we go index so we have to run it first the server is not run if we go there it will have npm start so run start so i'll show you instead of using those shortcuts i'll go to the terminal npm uh, i'll go to desktop ls sorry clear cd i'll go to phone list phone list and this cd i mean yeah, whatever your app is and i will do npm start so when you do npm start before npm start you have to remember you have to run npm i when you do npm start it will automatically uh, start up your server in localhost 3000 whatever you have defined inside uh, this file bin uh, bin www whatever you have defined it will be automatically created on that so now as i have told all the templates it's like django itself all the templates in django okay i have created okay so so everyone is waiting at the start point i'll go to there itself now if you go there all the templates are there inside view so directly when you when you do a slash when you do a uh, okay let's 3000 it takes you to the home and that home is this so where the title is fetched from this roots folder so if you go to the roots folder where the title express is, is uh, so you can render anything so so the rs dot uh, resource dot render works like that if you have data so for example you can send your own title or your name or you can email id and then this is the data you want to send it the uh, front end itself and then you can do resource dot render uh, you can which one you want to render so you we want to render this index file so we have to define index and then comma pass the data so now if you go there and change this to email and email this we don't need it sorry need this and if we okay so well that thing terminal here yeah. close that server start start that and so you get you got that email thing now okay this is the basic thing which you should uh, okay this was the basic thing now i will try to uh, use view js so what is view js okay i was uh, i forgot to so as you guys know so all the huge uh, so initially in php what happens like all the processing and all all the coding functions and every uh, like uh, all the logics are written in the backend itself and in the backend itself it is to process all the data and then uh, gives you a complete front end code it it, it used to render the code it's in the backend itself and uh, and then uh, directly send you directly send 
you the uh, rendered co- uh, rendered uh, fi- uh, like rendered html thing but what happens nowadays people uh, instead of using the backend itself they currently bought all those processing and everything in the front end itself i mean in the users lap- laptop or computer you can do entire thing i mean there is a lot of things you can their computer is a lot fast so using vue js or angular or react you can directly uh, do the entire logic in the users front end itself so if you go into the vue js site so i copy i'll copy this and i'll share it to you so if you go to the vue js site you go the you go to the get started you will see some kind of uh you will so you will see some kind of this script which uh, it will tell you to add this script so just go there and add your script to your head and that's it your your site and your uh, app is ready to use a uh, view js so how to use it it's very simple you have to create a deep parent deep and you give, you give a unique id uh, for example you may be going and now you just have to create a script file a script file and you just create a new uh, app equal to new so it's very easy if you can see it's uh, you can create a new just app very easily so and this in- instantiates an a uh, view app for you so here you can directly define which one you want to target it so for example i want to target this thing this id directly you have to copy the id tag and paste it there itself so it it targets that element so this app is targeted for this division now if you go to uh, now i have to define what all datas uh, will be using so data and data email so this is the data and uh uh-huh, okay I have no idea how to increase the font size. Let me check. Increase font size. Control plus mouse will. Okay, it doesn't work. Control plus mouse. Change. Uh, I have no idea how to increase the font. Size in web stomach suit. If anyone can help me out, uh, oh, I got him. How to? Yeah. So uh, the data is like all of all the datas which you want to render in the site itself will be. Uh, you can keep track of all those datas in this datas thing, and all those functions which you want to. Yeah, I have done it. Like it's very easy actually.
Okay, inside methods, you can enter all those methods. Uh, okay, I got it how to make it small and large and big. Okay, fine. Inside methods, you can uh, define all those methods which you want to run it in the front end itself and uh, get some output out of, out of that and render it in, render it in, into your front end. So, for example, you have you can run like uh, increase count. So, this is EJS way of defining a function. So. Or you can uh, okay you guys might not know how to use EJS function or directly you can create like this also and inside count return return count plus plus so this is how you return those clown count plus plus so this will increase the count uh, or you can do this also you can directly create count equal to zero and uh, uh, sorry, so email app dot count plus equal to one. So you do instead of doing this, do nothing. And what you can do this functions, you can directly attach it to your button or some kind of stuff. So for example, if you can add one button, you can add uh, the data into that. You can do add click. And increase increase count and how to render those so values are in, in Vue.js we have to use like this this tags if you use this tag it will automatically render so uh, if there is no issue it should render okay let's try it out uh, Okay, uh, this is why it didn't work. Goes outside. So as you can see, uh, the data which I have entered below was rendered on top. Now I will render the count itself. So if you refresh this, you see the count itself. Now we can increase the count by the button click so it's very simple as you can see so thing is like the idea of this webinar is like making the task of all those uh, people who are create uh, who want to create an app very easy keeping in mind the performance is not hindered so for example if you see the backend performance are not hindered at all because you are using a um, graph you are using which itself is it's a very optimized thing so and no just so that's why i wanted to give a webinar on that anyway there are other uh, way around so if you see in, into internet there will be other resources through which you can learn all those things and very easily the thing is those things are like it, it requires time and it's not that easy so that's why i wanted to give a webinar of these things so so my webinar actually i wanted to start it from the hair itself but thing is like people didn't know much about uh, npm and node.js so i want i that's why I took a little bit of time to give them a little bit claims of that those things. But so the actual webinar starts it from here. So uh, if you see, so uh, this is how a view normal app works, and we can do many other things here itself. Uh, many other things in the sense like write other functions. So today we'll be creating an uh, uh, login for our project so i was thinking of creating a collaborative project a, a real time project so um, using which uh, not only you will get a idea of all the uh, all those things which goes into production but also i mean uh, you will have proper understanding how a uh, project is done in a collaborations so in this enter in this enter uh, path of this creating this app I'll be helping you guys. So, 
so so right now we'll start by creating that login screen our in our uh, app so how to create that login screen is simple we'll uh, first add little bit of styling as you know boot, bootstrap is the most used uh, styling like library so we'll use bootstrap instead of using bootstrap okay chill we'll use bootstrap only and and copy and paste it here itself so your bootstrap so your bootstrap is imported here so it's ready and good to go and sorry I need view also and if you go there so your view is also important and your bootstrap is important let me change the theme you can do boots for getting bootstrap you can go to this website and to get started and uh, copy the template and paste it there now uh, now we'll have we'll go to this documentation we'll go nav we'll go to components or you can directly search it as uh, forms and so inside body we'll be creating a div so div parent div inside those parent div we can create a form now if you see this thing it will change and we'll have this form so this form doesn't look good so um, we can create a div and we can create a class row okay it didn't work so row didn't work we have to copy create one more div This is how it works. I can give it four. I can give a offset also, I guess. I don't know how to use. let me see if it works or not. Okay, offset didn't work. Let me leave it this one. It's not necessary though. I can give it a style and padding so now the main thing is how to connect this thing with the GraphQL server so we can do it using uh, those fetch okay, it didn't came padding and all it didn't came I don't know why these things are taking too much time. Okay, margin. I gave it looks pretty much good itself. So we'll go to the next step. So next step is like how to create. Uh, so there, I have shown you how to do query there itself. Now you can go to the code and copy this before pasting it we have to create our script I have to give an ID or sign in up anything you can put you can create a script so let and map equal to view and 
application directly into this thing and we can connect this that element with that hashtag sign here and data as I have told you data binds with the your so you can directly bind data with your app okay so email so email is this we need password so and also we'll be having methods using which we'll be checking whether the password and emails are correct methods and check user creating a function and uh, done so now paste your code sorry it's a check user so instead of uh, now if you go to the GraphQL So if you go to the last QL, so th using this code, you can insert new users into your table. So we want a code using which we want to check whether the user exists or not. So for that, we have to use other kind of statements. So that statements we can do using query. So inside query, we'll have aggregate. So if you see my user aggregate and search, I'll search where my uh, email equal to and password equal to and aggregate count column this thing id which means it will fetch you all those users Mm, having the same the password which you have entered for example joyash at the rate saran dot org and password joyash so it will give you all those unique so it doesn't shows okay it has okay joyash at the rate saran dot org password joy dash so it will fetch you whether that user exists or not so if it shows count equal to one that means there is a user in that table so so we can copy this and paste we can write so we can paste it here itself and get the fetch the code itself or we can directly write this code so writing these codes is not an issue it's a little bit of uh, i mean it's not an issue actually so you can you can directly like my head is equal to new headers and then uh, these all headers are not required so these are all those postman headers which are not required just you have to define application json i mean the type of request body type a content type you you can define uh, and all those queries so for all those uh, uh, all those uh, request whichever you do from the front end the code will be similar I mean for the entire entire front end wherever you want to do the code the code will be similar only, cha only changes will be inside this so you will have this query of ob query object so inside those you have to insert this thing so just change that I mean you don't have to change because you have generated the same thing from there and now we'll respond the text itself okay the, the, way, the only the reason why he used postman was to generate the code for us so without using postman also you can write the code so writing the code is similar like so if you see it's nothing like you just have to create the headers so using fetch uh, you can fetch the server and get your data so fetch is an inbuilt 
library in your browser. So whatever browser you are using, for example, you are using a Chrome or Firefox, whatever you are using, you have an inbuilt library named fetch. So using that fetch, you can add, get the data from the server itself. Uh, here, our server is Hasura. That that server which I have created on a click, so that is our server. So, so what we are doing, we are writing a small code. So the thing is, we are just changing the string. So we are copy. Uh, so once we create our query, we can directly paste it in the in this thing and use it, generate the code and use it. Or else, we can write this thing. This writing this is not an issue. So here my headers means there in uh, in requests there will be three parts one uh, header body and option there are other options which you want to send like so so my headers you just define all the headers i mean you want to tell the servers what is the content type you are sending so here you are sending a json type so this of this data is a json type object so you are sending a json type that's why you told the server i am using this content and this content type and so the only thing which will change here which will be changed here is this just all the code will be similar for all the queries whatever you do from the content itself so if you paste this this also works there is no issue with this so we'll we'll check it out we'll check it out by giving a button so it has a button so at the right click equal to this check user so when you do check user uh, we'll pass this data how to pass it like sign in app and dot email so uh, here we are dynamically changing the string value so this email we can fetch it from our form itself because we can bind this email data to our form itself here so we will directly bind it here itself so you have input field so for binding we use the model so the model is there which means it tells the view js that we should bind this input thing with that data object so we add the model email and below if you go we add v model so we add v model equal to uh, password I'm sorry this should be below so this is very easy instead of doing that document dot get element by id and get fetching the text from that you can directly get it using v model so in this way you bind this input field with this data so now uh, you can directly use sign in dot email app dot email and sign dot password so th in this way you can directly you can dynamically change the email value and password which you can fetch indirectly from those input fields so now when you click there is a at the right click instead of on click so whenever you do some kind of events you do like this on click right in uh, button but in this case you don't have to do any uh, you don't have to write any on option instead of that in view you have to write at the rate so when you write at the rate you have to write this function which it will run check user so if you see it runs check user Uh, don't worry about that after like after the live video is uh, after the, after the end of this video I'll, it, it's an, uh, the, it gives an options of uh, saving the video I'll save it and I'll share it to you guys so it will not an issue for you so so huh, where I was yeah so thing is sign in dot email we can dynamically change those things using our input fields now after changing our input field what happens we click on those button so when you click on that bot button we uh, run this function check user so what this check user does it directly fetches from the database whether that user ex exists or not 
so if it exists it will give you one or, of, or it doesn't exist it will won't give you any it will give you zero so you go there similar thing it will give you so right now we want to check it out so for that so view is not view w is not defined because i have done it okay View is constructor and should be calling new keyword. Okay, and one more mistake. I have not it's a constructor, should have a new keyword. Yeah, mostly it have so if I add your app in the right saran.org and password your hash Okay, uh, what happens? It submits whenever it submits, it does a post to us because it's a form. So, remove that form button that clear. Yeah, so it works. So, if you do joy dash at sarang and then joy dash. Now you see it shows current zero because there is issue in so if you see the logs it shows that the user exists now we can do some kind of rendering so for example we want to show that that you are signed in so we can keep a boolean value now is sign in and it's false initially okay so v if what it does is like it renders these divisions only if this thing is true or it returns any true value so if you see right now it won't render because it false we have defined it false initially so it takes i don't know why it's taking time okay so now you see that thing has gone now we'll make it like this says that if it is signed in it shouldn't show and when it is not signed in it should show that's that's why we added this exclamatory sign now when it loads it will show now we'll make a new division I will make a new division below move all those things and right here congrats you are signed in so we can remove this as this and instead of text response.txt we can do response.json what happens when you type response.txt it gives you a text value so instead of that we can do response.json so that it converts that text value into a json object and you can later on use it in your code so result so now we can directly check whether dot response response if result dot data dot this function so data dot joy dot aggregate dot count is greater than zero means user exists and you can sign in so you can change that value as is signed in true if you see now it will work
congrats you assigned it. it shows that we assigned it now the issue about this is right so the thing is everyone from the client side or the front end side can query in your database so that's the issues that is fetched uh, that that is the issue that generally people uh, they face when they keep the server open so right now our graphql server so let me remove this 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 is not necessary this is also not necessary okay so right now the graphql server is directly uh, exposed to the public so for example anyone can directly get in and it also written there that you it's not in secure endpoint so anyone can get in and change the data here so that's why the role of authentications library or uh, the web hooks through which an authentication is done are, uh, are, uh, the role of those things are okay, for these things like uh, authentications and all so that's why the role of joy gql comes into play where instead of doing all those hustle uh, like all those things you just directly have to import that library and attach it to your app and get your server run so we'll show you how to create and uh, sign in using google and uh, instead of creating those uh, uh, like uh, and also closing this uh, server i mean there, there is a role by a based data query when you can directly go permission and create your own role for example you can create user and without any checks and service so using that we can directly create our own rules and check it in this uh, back in itself whether the role is correct or not of that user and then give them data so as i have mentioned it initially like in the video itself so so here's the video So in the video itself, as I have mentioned it, uh, so as you have, as you can see, uh, either you can directly authenticate using an external server, or you can create a middle authentication server, and your app or your phone clients can communicate with your server, which indirectly will communicate with the GraphQL server, and then GraphQL server communicates with your Postgres. So either you can do this or you can do that. The other option is like you can directly uh, enable a webhook on this GraphQL server which authenticates whether the user is a proper user is a proper user or having a def, uh, defined role or not. So it will authenticate that and then only it will give you data. So this thing is okay. You can directly go to the documentation and check about this. This thing I'll tell you how to set up. So how to set up is very simple. You just have to go to npm. You just have to do inside this. Where is this? Close this. I have to close this. Okay, so close this and do npm. I draw equal. say so if you do this what happens your package manager will automatically install joy gql and also include that into your package.json so if you go there and enter it automatically import that joy gql Okay, fine. Now it's done. Now, if you see, the package manager has automatically inserted that into your package.json file, which is your configuration file. So now we can write those authentication codes into our roots file. So what is roots file? So roots file is nothing. You want to write a, a logic in the backend itself, 
whatever main logics are you can write you can write in the back end itself so this you can write it here itself so initially people used to use var now you can use const this is very good i guess So, JoyJQL has different kind of authentication method. So, one of the easiest kind is uh, using Google. So, if you can see Google sign in methods, whenever you go to the site, you will ask for whether you want to use a Google authentication, continue with Google or continue with email. So, one of the method is Google sign in method. So, Google sign in web app, it will give you a documentation which says how to attach google sign in into your app so if you go there integrate google sign in into your web app this is the site which you have to go look for that and then npmi enjoy google save and this so you go there you will see the documentation you just have to create your own project that be enough Product name webinar test. So it will create the project for you and also give you some kind of configuration files. For example, we are calling it from the web browser. Localhost, mm, localhost, and this two thousand. Okay, because you are calling it from this site, so I write now your this client ID and client secret. These are the uh, keys which will be used later on to identify whether you are a proper user or not like i mean using this you can directly uh, request the google servers and uh, uh, authenticate the credentials of end users so we'll be safe we'll be saving it for future use So I'm creating a JS file where I'll insert all my configurations. So here, if you see, let config equal to Google API client ID. Just uh, storing that in this file as we can directly use it in our app. Then now that we just export. this config such that we can directly import and use it in our index.js constraint okay 
now once we have already imported config file we will pass this to georgeql.set if you see we have google client id and uh, pass config dot google api dot client id then that's it your authentication server is ready and now just you have to add That's the GraphQL URL where you have to use this GraphQL URL. password has to access key is nothing like you can enter any password because right now it doesn't have any access keys later on when i'll show you how to uh, use access keys uh, then this might be then this might require right now we don't need it any anything you can put it i guess or you can directly put any so once this is that done, you are ready. I mean your authentication server is ready. Now you can directly create that sign in Google. You pass in the ID token. which you will receive in the request body but then result catch error sorry error function yes console or resource dot json error resource dot json is uh, our result just to make sure this two yeah so your sign in server is ready Now these things require three. Uh, this authentication thing require one table which we should have inside this. So we should create a table user auth. So this this is the table which we should have ID. Yeah, okay, we can use anything remove this email text ID you can use which I you can do anything like auth token Photos, whichever you have fetched from email, and yeah, that's it. Whatever you required. So in this way, you can create your uh, Gmail. I mean, authentication servers. Now you can directly post in this and check whether your users. Uh, 
and uh, you can check whether the user is uh, proper or not and it will return you a result which has its authentication tokens no its id it email its dp everything so using this for example if you can test it out So, yeah, also we have to integrate these things this script inside your front end. data we have to insert this client id yeah then and your button for signing so or we are you can do google so if you if you see npm start okay it shows module not found config okay config module dot export config i guess okay okay uh not this sorry Direct address is this country. Yeah. See the sign in button, it's it, it works. So now we just have to fetch the ID token. So for fetching ID to token, we can copy this function and paste it below. Now, once you're done with this, just refresh it. And sign in. And you can get fetch all those user data now the similar thing which we have done before we can do with graphql itself now you can use this also instead of passing all this data we have to fetch the id token so for fetching id token we have to use uh,
we have to use this services common helper so and and we can directly check whether the ID token is coming properly or not yeah so we get we got we got this ID token now we can pass it to the server to this and this will return you back an authentication token so all those things which after this is taken care by joy GPL. So uh, the next thing, uh, next the next things after this mostly uh, will be there in our documentation. If you go there, you will get to know how to do that. But it's it's trivial now. After that, you can directly uh, fetch that ID token and pass it to this server, and which as a required dot body. And after passing this, it will automatically return you back an object of authentication token so in this way you can authenticate whether the user is proper or not and there are other functionalities like check role using which you can check whether the user exists or not and then load the page for it for them so in this way we can make sure that the uh, the user the real user is actually uh, the real user is actually uh, fetching the data instead of everyone and uh, and we can close the server by directly changing the configuration file itself so that's how everything works like all the authentication and everything works so uh, after that you can write your own logics inside this and use it uh, and then do all your rendering up depending upon whether the user exists or not and then uh, also in front end itself you can use Vue.js to fetching the data you can directly render it Fetching the data, you can directly render it. In this way, I mean, fetching of data is very simple. I mean, you don't have to write any server codes. You don't have to do any coding and nothing. You have to do just create this this root, this index root, and your server is ready. Now you can directly uh, click on those, and you can create your query and directly query from the front end itself. In this way, you can directly use the GraphQL server without doing any kind of coding.